Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Quiet. In this video, we are going to solve problem number 516, longest palindromic subsequence. First, we'll see the explanation of the problem statement, then the logic and the code. Now, let's dive into the solution. So, we need to find the palindromic subsequence in the given string. We know what is a palindrome, right? When we reverse the given input, it should be same as the original input, right? For example, here we have B, 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 right? So if I reverse this, I will get the same answer, right? That is a palindrome. But we are required to find the palindromic subsequence. So when they say it is a subsequence, even if I have a, a different character in the middle of the palindrome, I should ignore that, right? Then I need to take the length of the palindrome sequence. So after ignoring A in this middle of the input string, I'm going to get the length 4. The length of the palindrome is 4, right? So I will return 4 here. Whereas if I had a similar character B, then it will be length 5, right? And I don't have to remove in this case. So to solve this particular problem, I'm going to use dynamic programming approach. Now we will see how we are going to do this, right? So initially I will create a list of zeros for a length of n. That is the length of the given input string, right? So here I have length of five. So I have created five zeros in my list, right? Then I will be having two for loops where I will start the first for loop from the end index that is from 4. So here the i pointer will be pointing to my first loop, right? So I will start that from the reverse index, right? I will start from fourth index in this case. So the next loop will start from i plus 1 to n, which means in this case I will start from 5 to 5, right? i is 4 plus 1 will be 5, and n is 5, right? So this will be my j pointer. This will be also the second for loop, right? So at the start of the first for loop, I will initialize the ith index that is 4 here. I will initialize with 1. Then I will iterate through 5 to n that is 5 to 5. Since we only have to 4, I can just ignore the second for loop. So after completing the second for loop, I will just copy the new dynamic programming array where I have created at the start of the first for loop. So at each and every iteration in the first for loop, I will create the new dynamic programming array for a length of n and I will initialize the ith index as 1 at the start. Then I will move to the next for loop where my j pointer will be pointing to, right? So in this case, we don't have 5, so we are just ignoring it. So then at the end of the second for loop, I will just copy the new dynamic programming array to the main dynamic programming array, right? So I will just copy. Next, I will start from index 3, right? As we enter the first for loop, since we are st going to start from index 3, so we should reset the new dynamic programming array, right? So here everything 0 as of right now. Then we need to go to the ith index, that is 3. We need to initialize 1 in the third index. Now my second for loop will start from i plus 1, so from 4 to 5 to n, right? Since we have a valid index 4, we will enter into the second for loop. So my j pointer will be 4 now. Now I need to check the ith index in the string input, that is b here, that is 3, right? So b 
and fourth index in the string input which is b as well so when both the strings are equal we will pick the j minus one index in the main dynamic programming array that is zero right j minus one is third index so it will be zero and i will add two to that particular value so i'm going to get two right i will put the two in the jth index four so in the jth index in the new dynamic programming array it becomes two the value will be two right the reason why we are adding two here is we are including the palindrome sequence so we are including two characters that's the reason we are adding two here right so in the second for loop next my j will be five since it is out of index i can just ignore so my new dynamic programming array will be copied as my main dynamic programming array right so my main dynamic programming array becomes the new dynamic programming array right i'm just copying this now my i becomes two now right then i will reset the new dynamic programming array then i will initialize this i index as one that is two right we have the second index and i'm initializing second index in the new dynamic programming array as one now i will make the second for loop to start from i plus 1 that is 3 to n that is 5 right so my j is 3 at the start now i need to check ith index in the input array that is b and the jth index b again that is second index and third index i need to check if they are equal i will pick the j minus 1 index that is zero in this case and i will add two to it then i will place this value in the jth index that is three right so i will make the third index as two right then i'm going to pick the fourth index we are iterating through third to fifth index now i need to check the second index that is the ith index two that is b here then the jth index 4 which is b again right now i need to visit the j minus 1 index in the main dynamic programming array that is 1 here so i have 1 and i will add 2 to it right then i will place this value in the jth index in the new dynamic programming array so here it becomes 3 now that is the jth index 4 right then my j becomes 5 which means i'm out of range i can just initialize new dynamic programming array as the main dynamic programming array right so i'm just making the changes here right so after the second index i'm going to reduce to first index then i'm going to reset the new dynamic programming array and I will initialize the ith index that is 1 here. I will initialize that with 1. Then I'm going to start from 2 to 5 in the second for loop. So my j will be 2 at the start. Now I need to check the first index and the second index in the input string. That is the ith and jth index. Here a and b is not equal. So when the strings are not equal, there is a different case here now i will pick the value in the jth index in the main dynamic programming array so at the second index so my j is equal to two second index we have one i will pick one then i will pick the j minus one index value from the new dynamic programming array j minus one is one so in the first index i have one so I will pick one, then I will take max of this two, right? I'm going to get one again. Then 
I will place this one in the jth index in the new dynamic programming array. So in the second index, I will place it with one. Then my j becomes three. Now again, I need to check the first index and the third index. Since both are not equal, I will pick the jth index from main dynamic programming array. That is two and j minus one index from the new dynamic programming array that is one again i will take max of these two i will get two then i will place this two in the third index that is the jth index in the new dynamic programming array so here it becomes two right then my j becomes four again I need to check the first index that is the ith index and the fourth index that is jth index both the characters are not equal I need to take max right I need to look the jth index in the main dynamic programming array that is 3 here j is 4 so I need to visit the fourth index in the main dynamic programming array that is 3 right then i need to visit j minus 1 index in the new dynamic programming array so that is 2 here and the max of this will be 3 now i need to take 3 and put this 3 in the jth index that is 4 right so i need to replace 0 with 3 now in the fourth index which is nothing but the jth index then we are finished with the second for loop i will just copy this to the new dynamic programming array right so it just becomes updated the reason why we are taking max between two values is that when the strings are not equal we are just keeping the maximum subsequence the palindromic subsequence so far in the last index that is the reason why we are doing the particular max function, right? And if we keep on doing that, we will be end up having 4 in the main dynamic programming array and we will just return 4 at the end, right? And the time complexity will be order of n square and space will be order of n square as well. That's all the logic is. Now we will see the code. So before we code, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, please like and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future and also check out my previous videos and keep supporting guys. So initially I'm taking the length of the input string as n. Then I'm going to create the list of zero for the length of n. This will be my main dynamic programming array at the start. Then I will write the first for loop where I will start from the last index right so it will be n minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 we are going to start from n index and we are going to reduce it then we need to create new dp and it will be zero list as well for the length of m and initially i will place the ith index in the new dp as one then i'm writing the second for loop where i will start from i plus one to am right if the ith index in the input string is equal to the jth index input string i will update my new dp by adding two to the j minus 1 index in the main dp else i will update this new dp jth index by taking max between jth index value from the main dp and j minus 1 index value from the new dp right then after finishing the second for loop I will initialize main dp as the new dp right then finally i will return the 
end value from the main DP, right? That's all the code is. Now we will run the code. As you guys see, it's pretty much efficient. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future and also check out my previous video. Keep supporting. Happy learning. Cheers guys.